Hey there everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create a tin type style in Photoshop. Um, so this is kind of the aesthetic you're going to be looking at near the end here. What you're really going to need is a picture of a person or an animal or even a stuffed animal, but it needs to make sure that you have visible eyes and nose. If you're doing landscape, it's really not going to show up all that much. I mean, you can still get kind of the tin type look, but it's not going to actually really show you the, the really neat, like style of the tin type if you're just using something that doesn't have eyes and nose. Um, so first thing you're going to do is open up Photoshop and you're going to open up a picture in Photoshop. Um, and so here is my initial picture. I, I actually, here's what it looks like. So the first thing you want to do is bring it in and you're going to edit it in camera raw filter. When you bring it in, make sure you have your standard size set already. So I always like starting with a square or eight by tens, um, or whatever size it's going to be. And then I set it to that size and then I bring in my, and I place my image into that picture. Um, so my, here's my picture placed. I'm going to go to filter camera raw filter. And the main things I'm going to do in camera raw filter, and you can bring this in from Lightroom. If you edit it first in Lightroom, that's fine. But you you want to keep the editing pretty much the same. Uh, do not set it to black and white. That's something that's going to happen a little bit later. You are going to bring up the exposure and the contrast. You want a high contrasted, high, like essentially high key photo almost. Uh, bringing up the highlights. I'm going to bring down the shadows and the blacks so I really have high contrast. Um, I don't want to blow out my image, but I want to get it close. All right, and then I'm going to bring up the texture so you can really see the eyelashes. And then I'm going to go down to effects and I'm going to give a little bit of a vignette. When I do the vignette, it's actually going to darken this a little bit so that I might want to go back in with some highlights and bring those highlights back. And so I'm now happy with how this looks. Let's see if it goes up. Can I get a little brighter? Yeah, all right, that's perfect. Once you're happy with it, high exposure, high contrast. Those are the two things you really want to have for your picture um, so that it really shows. And then press OK. Now it's made my smart filter down here, so I'm going to rasterize my layer so that it's flat. And I'm going to duplicate my layer, which is like the fifth tool down. So you're going to go to here and duplicate your layer just like that. So you have two layers here. Now you're going to make sure the top layer is selected and we're going to do some blurring on this top layer so that it gets that motion blur because in tin types you couldn't really get a super clear image so you get this like kind of a motion blur. So you're going to go to your filter gallery, you're going to go to blur and then you're going to go to motion blur. Don't do anything to the angle. My angle got set to two. I'm just going to say like zero and then you can bring up the pixels. And this is where you want to use your discretion. I think it got a little too blurry. You don't want it to be too blurry. You don't want it to be very obvious. You want just a very light blur. Let's see what happens if I set it to 12. That might be the ticket for this. And this is the first place that you really need to use your discretion is how blurry you want to make your motion blur. You don't want it to be too high. So like you don't want it to be like that. That's way too blurry. You, you want it to be almost like people can't quite tell it's blurry, but I think that's just right. Now that I have my top layer blurred, I'm going to add a layer mask onto this top layer. And so I'm going to go to here and it's going to create a layer mask. It's going to look like a white sheet of paper. I like to think of my layers as being sheets of paper and this white thumbnail here, make sure the brackets are around the white of the layer mask go to your brush, which is right here and make it black. And then the style of brush is a soft round, zero hardness, pretty large. And then the opacity, which is up here at the top is like 30, 30 to 35%. And that's because I want to be able to brush in to kind of deepen the areas. I don't want it to, I want to be soft edges. So here I'm going to bring back the eyes and the nose and the lips. I want the face to kind of come back, maybe the edge of the cheek. I want some of this necklace to be in focus. Not all of it though. And I'm going to have this arm here. I'm going to bring back the arm. So pretty much you want like the most forward facing items, maybe a little bit of this hat as well. And you'll see the black starting to show up here. 
on your layer mask. That's how you know it's working. So I'm bringing back a little bit of this shirt, but again, I don't want it to be too clear. I want it to still have that blur. So I'm going to bring a little bit of the cheek, get rid of a little bit of the cheek here, but I'm happy with that. It's, I still have, this is very blurred. This is very blurred. And around here is very blurred. Maybe a little less of the hat. There we go. Perfect. So I want the eyes in focus and I want the nose for the most part in focus. I want that spooky kind of look. Oopsies. That was supposed to be, I want that eye in focus. There we go. Eyes and nose are really the most important part. So once I've got those set and I've got my lips back in focus and everything's there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another layer on top of it. We're going to get rid of the black and white. So you've got your blur layer, which has now is the layer mask that cuts through to this crystal clear layer that you had before. And we're going to go down to our layer mask or uh, settings, which is looks like the circle with like a half cut through it. Let's see if I can zoom in on it right here. Click on that and you are going to go to your first one, which is color mixer. So once you're in color mixer, you're going to go to this setting right here. And this is where you're going to set it to monochrome. Look at that. Now it's, now it's your black and white. The first thing you're going to do once you have your color mixer layer set is you're going to take this red and you're going to go all the way to black. You're going to get rid of almost everything. You're going to then take the green, bring that up a little bit, and you're going to take blue and you're going to bring that up a little bit. You're going to kind of adjust your greens and your blues, and then you're going to start bringing back your reds. So I'm going to bring this back down. You might have to do a little, like I said, a little bit of finessing. And what you don't want to do is you do not want to blow out your image. You just want to bring back the quality of the image, but you don't want to blow it out. And if you aren't familiar with blowing it out, that means that like, for instance, right here, this white spot and these white spots here, it's where the light gets so intense that you no longer have details of the original image. It looks almost like a big glaring white spot. So that, that's blow, this whole area now is blown out. That's an example of blowing out. So I'm going to bring this blue down a little bit more. I'm going to bring this red up a little bit more. I'm going to kind of move my green around. I'm going to bring this back down a little bit more. There we go. Now we're starting to get that kind of almost haunting kind of look. The eyes are like really bright and piercing and you're like kind of concerned it's, that's like the, that's the stereotypical, uh, tin type look. Move this around a little bit. So you've got a couple areas where you're going to have to use like artistic finesse, where depending on the, when the picture was taken, how well the light is set, you're going to have to figure out how to kind of make it so that you're not losing detail. And so one of those areas is how much you should blur. And the other area is right here when you're starting to make your monochrome and bringing in those photos. You want these eyes to be really bright, but you still want it to kind of have that creepy, like almost darkened look on the face because of like development problems. All right. So there, I'm happy with how that kind of looks. I think this looks tin typey. So now let's get our next uh, layer on. And that is, you're going to go into here and you're going to go to um, photo filter. So it's again, that circle that looks like half white, half black photo filter. And usually the default one is warming filter, which is what you want anyway. And I'm going to bring up the density of that warming filter just so it looks nice and like a, uh, like aged. And so we're getting really close to the end here. Um, once you have that filter on very little minimal tricks and stuff to it, you can play around with your filters, but you want it to be a warm kind of look. You want it to have a nice warm color. You can even set it to a specific color. You can go into different styles of warming filters, but really you just want it to be warm. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add an overlay of like a tin type. Uh, you can go just to Google and just Google tin type overlay to find different versions of it. But you want to, of course, try your best to find ones that are uh, copyright free or at least 
like in the public domain. And then you're going to drag and drop it onto your thing. And it looks like you got rid of everything. Don't worry. You haven't. We're now going to go to the blending layer. Just drag and drop it right in, size it so that it fits the whole picture. Now mine was a square, so it just fits right in right over top of it. If you have a picture that's a different size, you need to make sure that it hits all the edges. If it's off like this, you're going to see the edge of it and it's going to look terrible. So make sure that you've got it covering the whole picture. The next thing we're going to do is go to the blending section here and you're going to kind of choose what is the best way of kind of blending it. I really love how multiply looks, but that's not always the best one. Um, sometimes screen is better or color dodge overlay is a really popular one. Soft light. This one's also really good. Hard light is a really cool and that one really gives the damage look on it. And so that can kind of work for you. So find one that where it works with your style. Yeah, mine's between multiply or hard light. I like multiply. No, I lied. I like hard light. All right, but it's still a little bright, so I'm going to drag it down a little bit. I want to, uh, I don't want it to be too obvious. So I'm just going to kind of bring down the opacity of that layer down to like 60%. I'm going to see what happens now if it's in multiply and it's like 60%. Nope, I still like it better that way. The other thing you could do too is let's say you have like some damaged look on the face and you don't want that damage to look like it's right over the face. You can make another layer mask. This isn't required, but this is again a moment where you can kind of decide. I haven't changed anything about my brush from the last layer. It's still a 35% soft, hard, soft, large round brush. And I just brush over this and notice how it erases through that tin type and brings back like the hat and you can kind of make certain areas show up more. So like I could then just have, so there you can see the brushes that I've done kind of brings out a little bit more and allows you, you could then even have your tin type be a little bit more dense and it won't distort the face. So that is how you can then kind of manipulate that tin type. So now if you're happy with it and you're done, you can do two things. You can export this, bring it into Lightroom and edit it, or you can, which I like to do because I'm just going to be merging all my stuff together <laughs> just like that. I go right click and I merged. I'm going to redo that so you can see what I did. I control Z. So I just right click on my layer and I just merge all my visible. So then it's all in one. I go back into filter and I can go into camera raw filter. And now that I have this completed picture, I can now go in again. I can bring up the texture. I can bring up the clarity, which can kind of change some things. Um, I can kind of manipulate the exposure again and the contrast. I can go into curves and kind of play around with it. And you can then do a little bit more work on the edit once you're done with everything to kind of do a little bit of touching up so that you're happy with it. So I kind of like, I just did a little bit, not very much. And then to export it, obviously you go to uh, file, export, export as. I always export mine as, PN, uh, as JPEGs and then export it, save. Name it, obviously. Don't do what I just did. I just slapped it in without a name. Always give it a name, but I just wanted to be able to see it faster. So this is my second tin type. This was my first tin type. And so as you can see, you get those haunting eyes. Um, you can get some other elements in there to kind of really bring out the old school features of it. But that's pretty much how you can create your own tin type style in Photoshop. So I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck editing.